All right, welcome back. We all know that Quinn released the new model, Quinn 2.5 VL, the multimodal model. I was really interested in the 72 billion parameter model. The problem is I could not get it running. I tried deploying it in SageMaker, could not get that working properly. I haven't really found any good documentation on what we need to do to even run that locally. Open router didn't have it, but then I discovered Quinn chat. I did not know this existed until two days ago, uh, right when the model came out. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to first like dig into the Quinn 2.5 VL model, go through some of the details about what I found, what it's good at, what it's not good at. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the Quinn 2.5 Max, which is the big daddy model that they have that's actually incredibly good that I've been putting through the paces off and on while working today. Anyway, let's jump right into it. First, taking a look at the Quinn 2.5 VL model and what it can do. All right, so here's what I'm doing. The one limitation that you're gonna run into immediately using their web interface is a limit of 10,000 characters being able to copy and paste it in. That actually kind of drives me nuts a little bit. Unfortunately, it's what we have to deal with. So in this case, I have a prompt uh, underscore Quinn dot text, and I'm going to go ahead and switch the model. You can see here it defaults to the Quinn 2.5 Max, which honestly is an incredible model from what I've tested so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the Quinn 2.5 VL 72 billion instruct model, and we're going to go and fire this up. Now, if it does this correct, what it should do is take a look at this pretty large amount of code and be able to de decipher it into such a way that it updates a particular function, which it's actually doing correctly now. So this is the right API that it needs to do. This is not an easy problem. When I give this to uh, different models, for example, it doesn't always get it right. It'll start fixing the wrong thing because I'm giving it basically three different code, three different files, one from my web application, one from my Shopify app, and then one from my um, a web backend. So if, let's take a look here. Did it keep backwards compatibility? So this is the thing that I actually want to see here. This is correct. So this is the difference here. So it needed to put this in here and it did not do anything with backwards compatibility from what I can tell. It basically assumed that it would be one of those two modes, which is fine. Like, I think this is like a, a pretty good answer. Let me show you what Quinn 2.5 Max actually did in this case. So let me show you what Quinn 2.5 Max did. So I gave it the same prompt Here's the thing I tried with this one. I actually put the question in the file. That did not work. So then I had to go ahead and basically say basically what I did to the VL version, which I think is fine being able to have to kind of specify that. And then this one came through and it did an amazing job. It went through and kind of detailed out the new structure. So this is the old structure. This is the new structure. And then it updated this to potentially even keep the legacy schema which I freaking love. That is amazing that it did that. And I did not get similar results on this um, every time when I was using like DeepSeek. This is great. I like, I had to ask DeepSeek to support the legacy version. This one figured it out on its own that it should. And then it gave me the example response. I really, really enjoyed this particular problem here. Um, and both answers are quite good, to be honest with you. The next thing I did is I made a very cluttered place on my desk. So you can see here, I have a controller to uh, my VR. I've got my Apple watch. I put my uh, screwdriver there, my LTT screwdriver. I've got a remote, uh, I've got two coasters. Uh, I've got like this Rubik's cube thing here, but it's not actually one. It's kind of like a more of a fidget toy. I then have another screwdriver here. This is a vacuum cleaner. They're not going to pick that up in the fan. So what I want to do is just see how good the VL model is at telling me what's in this picture. And here's the result. It picked up a Samsung remote control. That is phenomenal. The white bottle with purple cap. So it couldn't tell this was a screwdriver, which to be fair, I kind of have this overlapping underneath my Apple watch. So I think that's fair. A black strap, possibly from a watch or fitness tracker. It's coiled around the bottle and remote. That would be my Apple watch. A pen is partially visible. That's the pen. A game controller, that's perfect. A Rubik's Cube, so I did think that was an actual Rubik's Cube. A small black fan, so it got that. And then other items contributed <laughs> to the overall cluttered appearance of the desk. It, it insulted me too, which I actually love. And then it said the desk appears to be made of a dark material, possibly leather or vinyl. 
And it's really just a magnetic um, desk pad there. The ability for it to pick stuff up out of photos, I found to just be phenomenal. So the next test I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a graph and have it break down a complex graph and show us what it can do. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's not able to get everything right here. But basically, this is the empirical GPU flops per dollar. And you can see that this actually came from the epoch.ai blog. What I expected to do is actually be able to give me the date ranges, be able to show me the flops per dollar, and then the different lines that are there. This would be insane if it can actually pull this off. Okay, so here's the results of this one. The graph illustrates the trend of empirical GPU flops, floating point operations per second, per dollar over time, spanning from 2000 to 2030. The y-axis represents the logarithmic base 10 of flops per dollar. I cannot believe it picked that up. While the x-axis shows timeline in years. That's correct. And then the data points, the black dots represent the top flops per dollar GPU, showing a general uptre upward trend over time. So you're kind of matching. The orange circles indicate machine learning GPUs, also showing increasing trend, but with some variability. Very cool. So it didn't cover all the dots. So it, um, like these pink dots, I don't even know what these are. It doesn't even tell you, but it does actually detail out each of the dashed lines and the solid lines, so each of the lines. So it says the purple line is, yep, it's not dashed. The other ones are, is the orange one solid too? I guess it is, but there is nothing in the legend up here about the orange line. Oh, it just represents a trend for ML GPU showing a doubling of performance every 2.07 years. Interesting. And then the observations here, the red dashed line is the steepest, suggesting the fastest rate of improvement, which is correct. The green dashed line, Moore's Law, is less steep, but still indicates, yeah, yep. And then it goes on and on. Like, this is actually incredibly good. So I'm going to test another one, but this one I'm going to do with my own data that I have. All right, so this one is a little bit more complex because I wanted to see if it could pick up three charts in one. This is using fake data, but these are some of the dashboards we have in our product. And you can see here that we've actually got some pretty massive numbers over here. So it jumps from 37 to 1459. Anyway, I am going to go ahead and fire this off and just basically ask it to give me the details of each of the three charts in that image. And we're going to see what this ends up giving us. Yeah, that's perfect on that one. It got the purchase burn down, the loyal versus growth. And then the customers in each segment. Let me just compare those numbers, but that appears to be right. 25.8%, yep. And then customer total spend in each segment. Few customers make a high number of purchases with a significant drop off as a number. I am actually really blown away by this model. I can't even tell you how freaking exciting this is. I've never seen a model do such a great job at dissecting diagrams like this. I'm sure they're out there. Maybe they're out there. Maybe they're not. I've just never been into them. This is incredible. All right, let's jump over to my next test, but this has got me super jazzed. You know how you get like nerd chills after a while because you're super excited about something? But holy crap, this is super good. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I actually want to see how good it is at taking an image and turning it into like HTML. Now I'm going to ask this one a little bit different because what I've been trying to play around with is can I turn an image into a wireframe? And there's a reason for this in my product that I actually want to build. So I want to test this functionality in this model. So what I'd expect here is ideally I would have an, an, a layout in HTML with all the key elements here. <clears throat> and I'm sorry, I'm, I think I'm starting to get a little sick, so my voice is a little weird. But anyway, let's go ahead and fire this off and see what happens. And again, we've, we've got the Quinn 2.5 VL. you got to be careful because anytime you make a new tab, it switches back to the max version. All right, so we have our wireframe code. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this into a file, and then I'll load it up and show you what it looks like. Um... This is actually not terrible. You can see the, the grade, like DeepSeek. It's probably hard to see, even see on the camera. Into the, you got Start Now, Get DeepSeek API. We've got the API platform up here. For a wireframe, we've got the image there. This is actually pretty good. So let me go back to the original image. 
So this is the original image. Does it actually have text up here too? I think it missed. It did miss the text uh, that would show up above there. But for like what I would expect from a wireframe is not terrible. I would have wanted this to be, you know, a little less wide and kind of centered down to match that. But for a first pass from an image, that's really, really good. So one of the things I want to show real quick here is that when you try to upload a video file, you will get an error that is not video capable. But it do, did say that the Quinn 2.5 VL model would be able to actually pick up key events throughout a video, but it needs to be local. So this is a model I need to figure out how to run myself, ideally in my own hardware to be able to kind of test that capability because I'm actually pretty excited about the idea of being able to feed in a fairly large video and get the key elements out of that or be, even be able to extract text and things like that from the video. It just seems like an incredibly useful feature. What I'm going to do now is ask it a coding problem. This file has 440 lines of code in it and I'm asking it to basically add another tab and the proper filter stuff with it. And we're going to look through that and see if that actually does a good job of that. Because this is a task that I had to work on today, and I'm using something that I actually worked on it with another LLM to test how this one performs. So here we go. You can see that this is one of the problems that I end up getting, is that you can't have the prompt larger than 10,000 characters, which ends up being a, just a huge pain in the butt, honestly. So this is the question I'm going to try. Um, Again, I've tried putting the question inside of the prompt tip file before. It just doesn't do a good job picking that up. I'm not sure. It must just process that differently. Let's take a look and see what this ends up putting out for me. So this was a pretty big failure here. I want to see like if I can maybe redirect it a little bit. Okay, so I gave it a little bit more context. I'm hoping that it'll end up like course correcting and maybe I just got to be a little bit more explicit on this because in my last example, yeah, this is good. If it continues going, there we go. So active filter, that's perfect. We've got, where is my, yeah, there it is. The header or the title on it. I have to be honest with you. This model performs way better than what I've seen with Llama 3.3 in my testing. And it really makes me want to be able to run this via like open router or locally or be able to deploy my own endpoint on hugging face because I, I want to be able to put this through the paces of some of the like benchmarks and things that i've been able to do i just want to access to it via an api honestly so i'm going to jump over to my final test okay so what i'm having it do here is i'm going to have it write a python game of snake now if you watched my last video you saw that llama 3.3 did a great job at actually writing the game of snake so we're going to we're just going to see how this compares to that Okay, now that it's done, I'm going to go ahead and copy this and put it over into the file. I'm curious what you think. Do you think this is going to actually run its first time? Or do you think I'm going to have to fix some stuff? Now, the Llama 3.3 one worked immediately with no issues. Okay, so this is what it gave me. Snake game by Ed Arica. What the heck is that? Okay, so I have started moving. Oh, it's... Oh, holy crap. I actually thought it wasn't going to work, to be honest, when it was just sitting there. This is actually really good. I don't know what the Ederica thinks about that, to be honest. I might even have to Google what that is. I don't even know. I want to sound like a vacuum cleaner company. What? Okay, this is really good. Can you, I mean, can you guys believe that a 72 billion parameter model could write something like this? I remember when I was learning to code, I would do these like personal 12 hour coding challenges and I would do something like this. All right, I'm going to build a game of Snake or I'm going to make a game of Pac-Man. And I would get as far as I could in that 12 hours. And sometimes I couldn't even finish it when I was first learning. Now we have these like medium sized, maybe even small sized models, you could call it, that are able to do this in seconds. Crazy. All right, I wanted to see what happens if I go to the edge. Wow, this is actually better than the lava one because it didn't even have a quit or play again. Honestly, this model has exceeded my expectations in every way possible. The ability to pick details out of an image are just phenomenal. The way that it can pull that out of diagrams, I actually want to do some head-to-head -head now with some other vision models because in all the ones that I've tested, it's been a few months, they really sucked at getting details out of diagrams. Uh, I've worked on 
OCR technology. I've worked on image detection technology before all of this stuff, these LLMs were a thing. And this stuff kicks the stuff that I built, but like you just wouldn't believe. I, I'm just blown away that we have this stuff uh, available to us. So what I'd say about this model is I really want to be able to test it in something like Rue Klein, or I'm actually playing around with a new thing called Continue. I'd like to be able to try it there, but I need an API to be able to do that, or I need to be able to run it locally or deploy it somewhere. And anytime that I've tried to do that, I just have not been able to pull that off. It feels like there's just some complexity in its setup that's keeping the the Jika files from being generated. And I feel like there's issues with getting it up in open router and other places that's slowing them down because of all the stuff that's happening there. I am blown away by this. It did, does a great job at coding. It beat any other 70 billion model I've ever tested on coding. I have that one problem that I've been using over and over again that there's no way it could be trained on. It's like a ridiculous amount of code and then a very particular thing where it needs to go through and look at how the payload's being built, how the web app uh, is actually taking that payload and transforming it, how that payload is being sent to this uh, another server, and then that's what needs to actually change. So it's able to pick up the payload as it kind of goes through, and it did a great job at that. And you saw that in that first example I gave you. I'm super impressed with it. I want to test it more. And I, honestly, I do want to spend more time with Quinn Max as well. The only thing that I would say about it is this feels slow to me. The Quinn Max version, while really good, I'm just so spoiled now, I think, from the speed that I get from some of the other ones that it just feels a little bit slower to work with. But I am going to start like running it side by side with some of the other things I'm doing just to see how it performs with a little bit more testing. Anyway, I am curious what you guys think. If you had a chance to play around with that, did you even know Quinchat existed? I didn't know that there was a thing here. Um, if this takes off and starts getting DDoS and attack like DeepSeek, I'm going to be really sad because I'm excited about playing around with some of the new toys that's introduced to me. If you like content like this, please like and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. Until next time, peace out.